fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver. Flo Danvers, widow of a notorious outlaw leader, left Arizona after her husband was captured and hanged. She bought a small rundown farm, not far from the Texas town of Tall Rock, where Flo lived alone and kept to herself. One day, a group of horsemen stopped at the back door of the farmhouse. With gun in hand, Flo opened the door and stepped outside. Stay where you are and state your business. <laughs> Always ready for trouble, aren't you, Flo? Fever Dolan. <laughs> I should have known you by those heavy whiskers you always wear. Well, I reckon you didn't expect to see me down this way, huh, Flo? Nope, I didn't. Who are the hombres with you? My gang. Had them with me about six months now. Come on up here and meet Flo, boys. All right. Flo, meet Gil, Mex, and Luke. Three of the toughest gunmen in these parts. How do you Hey, it's risky being around here, Beaver. I saw a handbill about you tacked up in front of the sheriff's office in Tall Rock. Oh, we're used to taking chances with the law, Flo. You see, we pulled a job in the next county a few days ago. We gave the law the slip and came here. We uh, figure on hiding out a while. I remembered you living here, so I brought the others figuring you'd put us up. Well, I don't know. Well, you'll be well paid, Flo. All right. I'll put you in the bunkhouse. Nobody uses it since I don't have any help on the place. Yeah, I could tell that by the looks of it. Jake left me enough so I can get along without working the place. Come on, I'll show you the bunkhouse right now. I'll clean it up so you'll be comfortable. There are plenty of bunks for all of you. It'll do fine, Flo. We're not particular. Just right. put your horses in the barn out of sight. I'll go to town later and get enough grub for all of us. Nobody comes out here, so you'll be safe enough if you keep out of sight. It is very good for a hideout, Beaver. And with the senora to look after our food, we'll be most comfortable, huh? Yeah, it's a good place to hide out for a few <laughs> days, Mex. <laughs> Are you sure the law can't trail you here, Beaver? Uh, we covered our tracks well, Flo. Don't worry. Uh, get to town for the grub as soon as you can. We're plenty hungry. Sure. First I'll straighten up the bunkhouse, then I'll head for town. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, had heard of the crimes committed by Beaver Dolan and his followers. So they rode southward into the territory where most of the robberies had taken place. It was late afternoon when they stopped to make camp in a clump of trees. 
Tonto, uh, Beaver Dolan and his gang are known to have headed this way after robbing a stagecoach in the county north of here a few days ago. Ah. You think maybe them find hideout and stay undercover for a while, Kimasabi? Well, it's possible. We'll start at dawn tomorrow and search the nearby hills, Toto. Ah. We not have supplies. Scouts still saddled. Let me go to town and get food. Good. I'll get water from the stream we passed and have a fire going by the time you return. Ah. Easy, Scout. Easy, Father. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Later in town, Toto entered the general store. Hey, Indian, hold that door open a minute so the lady can get out with her packages. Ah. Sure you can manage, Mrs. Danvers? Of course I can. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye. Hmm. Haven't I seen you someplace before, Indian? Mm, may not know. May not live around here. You sure look mighty familiar to me. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Thanks for holding the door open. Uh -huh. <laughs> the widow Danvers sure is mighty independent. And her manners aren't what you'd call gentle either. Oh, I'd hate to have a run in with her. <laughs> her seem tough. She's tough, all right. And she doesn't like people. Lives alone about three miles out the North Trail in a run-down farmhouse. Folks say her husband was Jake Danvers, a tough outlaw leader. Got caught and was hanged up in Arizona. Oh, me here, a Jake Danvers. I reckon lots of folks have. Of course, you can't believe all you hear, but folks say the widow lives on the money he left, money that was probably stolen from others. I reckon she does have money put away. She sure doesn't bother about working her farm, none. Well, her buy plenty supplies, look like. Yes, yeah, she took out one load out to a buck uh, board before you came in. Now, funny thing, too, she never bought much here at one time before, but this time she bought enough to feed half a dozen or more for a week. Maybe her have plenty ranch hands to feed. No, lives alone, like I said, and doesn't have any help on the place. Well, I reckon it's none of my business as long as she buys and pays cash. <laughs> uh, what did you come in to get, Indian? Uh, let me give you a list of supplies. And let me come back later. Now, hold on. It won't take long to get your stuff together. Um, me not wait now. Adios. Toto remembered that he had seen Flo Danvers at her husband's trial in Arizona the year previous. His curiosity was aroused by what the storekeeper had told him, so he decided to follow Flo to her place and look around. He was already out of sight when he mounted Scout at the hitch rack. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Get him up, Scout. Flo soon covered the short distance to the farm. She stopped in front of the weather-beaten bunkhouse. Whoa, ho there! Whoa, ho now! <laughs> well, Beaver, I brought back enough to feed all of you for a few days. I'd better send somebody out to unload it. Sure. Gil, go out and get the stuff. Yeah, all right. Where's the Mexican? Yeah, Mex is out in the barn feeding the horses. Look, Beaver... It isn't that I'm trying to get rid of you and your men, but uh, I hope you're planning to leave in a few days. Why? I don't want to have to go in for more grub, that's why. That gossipy old storekeeper might get suspicious with me buying so much stuff at one time. I usually go in every other day and buy just enough to see one person through for a couple of days. He was curious when I bought so much at once this time. Hey, here's the stuff. Lee, here in the bunkhouse? Yeah, just put it on the table. Yeah, all right, Flo. Don't worry about the storekeeper, Flo. We'll be hitting the trail by the time the grub you bought runs out. Now, how about cooking some grub for us right now, huh? We're all mighty hungry. All right. It's getting dark, so I'll light the lamp. Have somebody rustle up some kindling and water, then I'll cook supper. It was dusk when Toto, who had followed the tracks of the buckboard to Flo's place arrived near the hideout. He rode in among the trees nearby and dismounted. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Easy, Scout. He tied Scout to a sapling, then moved through the shadows toward the house. The house was in darkness, but the Indian saw a light in the bunkhouse. He decided to investigate and cautiously made his way to a side window. Then his keen ears caught the soft pat of a footstep behind him. Toto whirled around and <laughs> stared into the barrel of the Mexican's gun. Bitch! And do not move, amigo. Oh. It's good I was coming from the barn, no? 
Why are you here at the window? Pass them, see light, look through window. So you are the naughty one, huh? Just what did you see, Senor Indio? Uh, you see woman and farm hands and I'm eating supper. Now don't tell me you are so stupid as to think such a rundown place like this has farm hands. It is most evident to anybody that this farm has not been worked for some time. Mm, me not notice. Well, me go now. No, amigo, you're not leaving just yet. I will take you inside so my friends can look you over. Keep your hands up and walk to the front door. Hey, where'd you get the red skin, Mex? Yeah, who's that? Why'd you bring him in here? I see him looking through the window. I think it's best to bring him inside, senores. Wait a minute. That's the same Indian I saw at the store this afternoon. Well, he must have followed you out here for some reason, Flo. You better make him tell why he did come here, Beaver. Yeah, he yeah. tell already. Me not say more. You'll say plenty for we're through with you. Yeah, we have ways to make him talk. No, me not talk. Take his guns, Gil. Sure. Hey, come on. Here. Yeah, I have them. Hey, mighty nice guns, too. Too nice for an Indian to carry. Maybe he has stolen someplace, huh? Me not steal guns. Them mine. Now get him to talk, Beaver. Wait a minute, Beaver. What's the matter, Flo? He doesn't have to talk. I've been wondering since this afternoon where I saw that Indian before. Now I just remembered. Yeah? Where? At my husband's trial a year ago. Huh? This redskin was with a tall mast, hombre, who helped the law catch Jake. Yeah, yeah, that sure explains a lot. And I suppose, Injun, you know who we are, huh? Me not talk. He knows all right, Beaver. Let me tell you, he's dangerous. We can't let him get away alive. Oh, You're right, Flo. Oh, but before we get rid of him, we have to get him to talk. He might have been sent to trail us by that mask, hombre, you spoke of. Well, Indian, speak up, were you? No. You know him all right, and you'll admit it. Now, come on, tell the truth. Oh. You not do that if you not have gun. Hold on, Beaver. Have the boys tie him and put him in on one of the bunks. Then we'll finish our supper. Later, you can give him a going over until he tells all we want to know. As the evening wore on and Tonto didn't return from town, the Lone Ranger became anxious. Removing his mask, he disguised his features. Then, mounting silver, he started for town. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, silver! Later, he stopped in front of the general store. Oh, oh easy, steady, big fella. Yes, I sent an Indian after some supplies this afternoon. Did he come in here? Yeah, let's see now. There was an Indian came in this afternoon. The only one, as a matter of fact, a tall Indian dressed in buckskins. Yes, he's the one. He gave me a list of supplies, and I told him I'd get the stuff for him right away, but he left saying he'd be back. Hasn't showed up yet, though. Well, that's strange. Yes, it is. He didn't seem to be in a hurry till I told him about the widow Danvers. What about the widow Danvers? Well, I told the Indian she's the widow of the outlaw, Jake Danvers, who was hanged in Arizona a year ago. She has a small place about three miles out the North Trail. Was there anything more said? Well, let me see now. Oh, yes. I told him I didn't see why she started to buy so much supplies all of a sudden, seeing as how she lives alone has always bought a little at a time. You see, the extra supplies she bought this afternoon was enough to feed five or six hungry cow pokes for several days. Thanks for the information. I'll see you later. Now, wait a minute. What about the supplies the Indian order for you? Don't you want to take them? One of us will get them later. Adios. Very big fellow. Come on, silver! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. When the Lone Ranger questioned the storekeeper and learned about Flo Danvers and the unusual amount of supplies she had bought, he realized that Tonto must have been suspicious and followed her. Believing that Tonto had run into trouble, the Lone Ranger hurriedly set out for the Danvers place. Meanwhile, in the bunkhouse, Flo and the outlaws finished supper, while Tonto, seemingly forgotten, lay tied hand and foot on one of the bunks. After supper, however, Tonto once more drew their attention. Now, Beaver, let's get things settled with that redskin. Yeah, that's right, Beaver. All right. You said something about him being with a mask, hombre, who helped the law catch Jake. Yeah, that's right. But I didn't tell you who the masked hombre is, Beaver. You mean you know who he is? Beaver, after you left Jake's gang and went on your own, we began to hear about that masked man. Go on. You'll know who he is, too, when I tell you he's known as the Lone Ranger. The well, Lone why, Ranger? Hey. Why, sure I've heard of him. He helps the law. He never gives up, either. Why, Jiminy, we ought to take that redskin outside right now. Wait a minute, Gil. Let's not be hasty. I've thought of a plan that might work. What is it? Yeah. What you thinking now, Flo? Just this. Maybe we could get that masked hombre to come out here alone so we could trap him. Well, how you plan to do that? If he thinks the Indian has a line on you and your gang, he'll come here. Yeah, but how do you plan to do it? Well, my husband told me this Indian got a line on him a year ago and trailed him. When he got near the gang's hideout, it seemed he tied a note to his big paint horse and turned him loose. I don't figure that one. Shut up, girl. Go on, Flo. Well, the masked man got the note and backtracked on the paint's trail. Well, what have you in mind now? We'll force the Indian to print a note saying he has a line on you and your gang for the masked man to come here to this old bunkhouse. The masked man doesn't know we have the Indian prisoner, so he'll come here and we'll trap him. Hey, that's a good idea, senor. Yeah, we'll make the Indian write the note like you said, Flo. Oh, Mex, go out and look around for the Indian's horse. And while you're gone, we'll dictate the note. If the Indian refuses to write it, we'll plug him. The Mexican soon found Scout where Tonto had left him among the trees. Then Beaver had Tonto print the note. There. There, note like you want. Yeah. What's that drawing of a bird you put on the bottom of the note? That drawn a thunderbird. Indians not put down words that live on paper without making drawn a thunderbird. Lone Ranger know that. I reckon it's an Indian superstition, Beaver. The masked man will know that note isn't faked when he sees that. Ah. All right, Indian. Now, we'll take you outside, put that note onto your pommel, and then you send your paint to the Lone Ranger. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger rode along the north trail toward the Danvers place. The moon shone brightly... As he rounded a bend, he saw a riderless horse coming toward him. In a moment, he recognized Scout. There's Scout without tunnel. Oh, Scout! Whoa! Hold there! Whoa! 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 As Scout moved close, the Lone Ranger noticed the note attached to the pommel of the saddle. He leaned over and took it. Steady, Silver. The moonlight is bright enough for me to make this out. You see, Lone Ranger, they get lying on Beaver Dolan gang. He wait here. You come alone to old bunkhouse at Danvers Farm on North Trail. Signed, Toto. Toto would never send a note addressed to Lone Ranger. He'd write Kimo Sabe. And that drawing of the Thunderbird means danger. The Lone Ranger studied the note a moment. He recognized Toto's writing, but realized he must have been forced to write the note. He decided to notify the sheriff, then to ride out ahead of the sheriff and his men to find out what he could. Come on, Scout. Come on, Silver! Still in his disguise and without his mask, the Lone Ranger headed back to town and soon stopped in front of the sheriff's office. Hold, 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 scout, hold. He's just got a big fella. Well, mister, what's on your mind? Sheriff, are you interested in catching the Dolan gang? The Dolan gang? I sure am, stranger. Then I suggest you take your men and go out to the Danvers place. I think you'll find that gang hiding out there. Who told you that? 
Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Heard of him? Mister, he helped me catch some outlaws once. Suppose I tell you he sent me. He gave me this. A silver bullet, huh? I'll get a posse and go out there pronto. Thanks. See you later. Adios. Adios. All right, Scott. Come on, Silver. Later, the Lone Ranger arrived at the Danvers farm. He left Silver and Scout among the trees. Then, putting on his mask, he cautiously moved through the shadows toward the bunkhouse, in which a dim light was seen. In a few minutes, he reached the side of the bunkhouse and crouched near the window. He listened intently, but heard no voices from inside. Then he cautiously looked through the window and saw Tonto tied and gagged on a bunk. No one else could be seen inside. He waited a moment, still listening. Then, after glancing around carefully, he quietly approached the front door. Then, slowly, eased it open. With gun in hand, he started forward to release Tonto. When... Don't turn around, you reach! Beaver Dolan stepped from behind the door. Flo and the others, who had been flattened against the front wall of the bunkhouse, moved forward and stood facing the masked man. Well, <laughs> our plan worked. You see, I was watching outside and heard your horses stop among the trees. So I came in and warned the others to stand against the front wall out of sight of the window. Then I waited behind the door. <laughs> Mister, you have to get up early to out with Beaver Dolan. I'll turn up the lamp, Beaver. Close the door, Max. See? Well, here he is, Flo. Came right into our trap. I've always wanted to see this hombre close up. And now you better not get too close. We'll take that mask off of him for a good look when he doesn't have those guns handy. Well, mister, there's your Indian friend tied and gagged on a bunk yonder. Place your guns on the table there, mister. And don't try anything. There are more than one gun pointed at you now. Remember, any tricks and you're a dead duck. I'll remember. Hey, what was that, Peter? His horse, I reckon. Now, go ahead. Put your guns on that table, like I said. All right. The Lone Ranger walked slowly toward the table in the center of the bunkhouse. He knew that Silver was too far away to be heard, and that the whinny must have been from one of the horses in the sheriff's posse. He thought quickly, then decided upon a risky move that might give him the chance he needed. Hurry up, lay your guns on the table. Right. The masked man slowly placed one gun on the table, under the watchful eyes of the outlaws and Flo. Then he reached out, as if to put down the other gun. But instead, with a sudden sweep of his arm, he sent the glowing oil lamp flying through the air to crash against a wall and drop onto one of the bunks near the front door. At the same time, the Lone Ranger quickly moved into the semi-darkness near Tonto's bunk. Hey, the blankets are flaming out. The flames will block the door in a minute. They will. Now, don't get panicky, men. Get that masked man and Indian. Get them both. Hold it. No! Oh! No! The flames are spreading toward the door. Never mind them. Let's get out. Then we'll have them trapped. I'll free you, Tonto. Quickly, the Lone Ranger cut the cords that bound Tonto and removed the gag. There. Fire get banned. Oil spread the door. We get it out quick. The sheriff and his men have arrived. We'll go through the window, Tonto. Hurry. You first, Tonto. You hurry. Those flames spread quickly. Don't let anyone get away, man. Look, there's another one. A masked man. And I see an Indian near the window. Well, hold your fire, don't shoot. Thanks, Sheriff. Reckon we got them all, mister. The light from that burning bunkhouse was a help. They came running out smack into our guns. Come on, I want to make sure you caught Beaver Dolan. He was wounded before he came out. Yeah. There they are, waiting to be taken to jail. Wait, Sheriff, you haven't anything on me. Sheriff, that woman who planned to trap Lone Ranger, her hide gang in bunkhouse. Flo, I don't see how they found out. Tonto outsmarted you with that note. Oh, my. Printed only what we told them to. Me draw Thunderbird. Not tell Lone Ranger, me in danger. <laughs> Reckon they're both too clever for you, Beaver Dolan. Because of them, we caught you and your gang. We're glad to have been of help, Sheriff. I knew we couldn't catch them alone. That's why I came to your office for help. 
You mean that fellow who came to me was you in person? <laughs> yes, Sheriff. <Your Honor. laughs> he even put one over on me. <laughs> you have enough men to get these gummen to jail, so Toto and I will be on our way. We'll stop to see you next time we're down in this territory. So, adios, Sheriff. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. This is all your fault, Beaver. You should have been more careful and then made him drop his guns. He would have found some way to outwit you. He even fooled me when he came into my office without that mask. Without his mask? Then you saw his face? I saw a face, but it was entirely different than the one I saw once before when he was unmasked. Don't know of anyone who ever saw him unmasked and without a good disguise. He's plenty smart, Dolan. No crook would ever be smart enough to put one over on the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.